So gentlemen, thanks so much for coming on the show and answering some pretty tough questions in a really junk market. Let's take some questions and get out of here. It is Friday. The weekend is here. Stop looking at your portfolio. There's much better things to do. Okay. So here we go. This is just some comments I, I found on the, on, the, on the stream. My biggest mistake is not buying Bitcoin sooner. I think we can all say that. Even the, some of us who have been here since 2014, like Ben, I'm sure he would have liked to uh, buy Bitcoin a lot sooner and a lot more. 90% cash. That's a lot. 9% Bitcoin, 1% ETH, 1% soul. I mean, what do you think of that? Cash is too heavy. <laughs> that's pretty damn uh, heavy like, like, yeah. yeah i mean i mean j just j do, do an ev calculation look at where names were mm -hmm. even 30 40 days ago versus where they are today and look where they were a year ago and and do the math how much more downside is there calculate the pe ratio of stocks look at mm -hmm. some of the names out there that are very well adopted um or at least just par park your cash in in bitcoin um, like Bitcoin, yes, it could go back to 22K or could hit 22K. It could hit 25K again. But every time it does, we see the money flow in and it gets bought up. In fact, I was very pleased to see, I think it was a glass note chart that retail investors have bought heavily over the last week. And it's normally the whales jump in there and grab it. But it's good to see retail getting some too. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, Ben, Ben, had, a, ben had that, that video, I think it was this morning. Like, I think you'd record it like uh, super early. But it was about, it wasn't whale games. It was something about whale. And you talked about the different whales from like 103 down to 164 that were like accumulating massively. But then you also showed the other side where there were some, some whales that were doing some pretty dumb things. But what do you think about 90% cash on the sidelines? I'll say this. I, I like their conviction. Um, <laughs> I, like, I don't like, it, it's hard for me to, first of all, I would say it's probably a bit too heavy at the same time. Like, I'm, I'm going to sort of contradict myself. Like, I don't think that 25K is the bottom. Uh, it's easy, you know, I mean, it, but the bottom might not be for a few more months for all we know. You know, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think 25K is the bottom. There's a lot of, lot of indicators. Uh, again, you know, don't take it out with me. Take it out with the data. I got about 40 <laughs> indicators that, that suggest we could go lower. Doesn't mean we have to, but we, yeah. we certainly could. So if, if, if you think it's going to go lower and you have that conviction, I don't think there's anything wrong being heavy cash. It might be a little. It might be a little too deterministic to be ninety percent cash because, as a, I think, an investor should always hedge against being wrong, um, and being ninety percent cash might be a, a bit too much. But you know, I mean, at the end of the day, if if we go back to even the two hundred week moving average or below, you know, having cash on hand is 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 probably not a bad play. Um, One percent Solana. I don't. Uh, Look, I mean, Solana's bleeding against Ethereum, and Ethereum's bleeding against Bitcoin. So, um, you know, I mean, what else is there to say, right? I just think it's going to go down. So, I mean, you know, I, I wish you luck. I mean, one percent isn't a lot, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna criticize you too much on it. <laughs> gotcha. But, um, yeah. So, two hundred week is a sweet spot to buy. Also, Ben is fine watching the world burn. Interesting. Let's see. And then, of course, uh, this is from: Are you still DCing or holding for now? So I got to tell you, like, I'm still DCing and I'm still DCing uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, a little bit more Bitcoin. And actually, I'm taking some lead off of Ben from his website. Great website uh, where you can actually find these, these risk factors. And we're talking about 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 as they go down. That's what I'm pretty much looking for. So I'm probably just going to stick it out with, uh, with Bitcoin. Also, I got to do some renovations on a sports facility of ours. So I'm taking out uh, just cash cash, but that's just another thing that i gotta do uh denim says we are so early uh, i believe that and then this is a great one please thank ben and james from me they discussed safer stable coins two weeks ago that made me change my ust to usdc and save me from losing an upsetting amount thanks for all sharing knowledge so gentlemen thank you so much for doing those types of things and talking about that and then uh yeah DS, usdc and let me just <laughs> okay and we'll finish up with the last couple ones we'll get out of here skinny jean man bun george thank you so much what are your thoughts on buying solana 50 bucks i think we know james or uh, ben's answer james what do you got uh again it's it's a very nervous time for the next two months um what i'm doing is literally 
my goal has been for the longest time, I said it a thousand times on my channel, is to equate the size of my ETH bag and my Sol bag. Right uh -huh. now, it's about 15% ETH, 5% Sol, because Sol has fallen faster than ETH. Yeah. But I think on a relative term basis, if you go to your pair and pull up a Sol ETH pair, you will see that it really did bottom out at 0.02. Okay. And that's when I swapped some ETH for Sol um, to try and equate the bags. Now, <laughs> if that ratio goes up to 0 0.026, 0 0.027, I might swap back and just play that. Again, as I mentioned, this is, this is the market that you swing between your different assets, not necessarily buy. But again, if you think ETH and DeFi mm. is the future, everybody should have a little bit of Sol because it'll be one of those two that wins the day. Yeah, it just depends on when you want to get into it. That's up yeah. to that's for you to make those decisions. Uh, you at home, this is something I didn't wasn't aware about. This can you please inform your viewers that LFG can't dump their AVAX uh, because it's locked for one year. I know for for well, Ben, you've got an uh, an AVAX stake pool just like me. I think when you lock it up, you can you can uh, determine which how long it's going to be, and I think the max is one year. Not for sure on that one. I'll have to take a look at that, but that's an interesting statement. Yeah, the, the the lock that you put on it. So the longer you lock it up, the yeah. the more the higher the the rewards your your delegators can get. So yeah. I, I locked mine up for for a year, and actually it actually becomes unlocked in uh, four days. For for oh for you or for, for me? Got, for yeah, me. For, gotcha. Yeah, I think mine's uh, like next month or something like that. And then lastly, we'll get out of here. What's your take on grayscale? And there are apparent conversations with the SEC. Maybe some traction is made. I'm going to start off first. If this is for an ETF, I don't ever believe it until I see it. I've been here on ETF since I got in in 2017. So anybody got anything to say? I think James, you're more of a more of a of a of a, a hope master on the ETF than I am. Yeah. So I I, I said uh, in my 2022 predictions. July was the month that I believe there is a chance of Grayscale converting. And the reason for that is because the futures ETF typically comes out before the spot ETF in yeah. some cases for yeah. some type of assets. Second of all, they have the lion's share of Bitcoin. What is it? 650,000 Bitcoin. Yeah. Third, uh, Wall Street is putting the SEC under tremendous pressure to get this going. And then you've got fourth, you've got firms like Fidelity that are making advances into making Bitcoin available through pension accounts. So again, all roads are, are boxing, I use the term again, boxing the SEC in to take action. They can't run away from this forever. And also Gary likes to have Bitcoin trading at such a low price. It takes a lot of risk off of him too. If it's trading at an all-time high, no, he wouldn't run into approving the spot ETF. But the fact that <laughs> no. it is so cheap now relatively on a relative basis, and he's a former MIT professor lecturing on Bitcoin, I think... I think mm. I used to think there was a 60 to 80 percent chance that it would be approved in July. Now I'm thinking 50 50. I like your style, James. You before get, you... year end, it has yeah. to, something has to give. It, it's it's too big an asset to ignore forever. And when you look at the other approvals that they do, it's yeah. ridiculous that this isn't already approved. Ah, oh, gosh, you. All right. So, gentlemen, thanks so much. I just let's leave it with this portfolios, not a good idea to watch them all the time. What are you guys doing this weekend? Ben, what you got? Kids? Yeah, soccer? probably. Yeah, my uh, my oldest kid has a soccer game tomorrow. So I got to do that. Might take him to the pool this afternoon. Um, he get, I got to go pick him up from the bus stop in like an hour or something. Let's get um, out of here. But yeah, look, I mean, I, I just sort of wrap it up. Enjoy your summer. Um, you know, markets are risk off right now. We'll go back risk on eventually, but don't, don't, don't lose all your cash buying the altcoin dip. Perfect. James, what you got this weekend? Uh, <laughs> do a little gardening maybe and I'll be here. <laughs> nice. Creating content. So that's it. Creating content and get out. All right, gentlemen, yeah. thanks so much. Remember there's links in the description for both these gentlemen's YouTube channels, as well as their Patreon and their website. I recommend both. And that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate everybody. Thanks so much. See you guys on the next one. Adios.